Hello, good morning. I'm sorry I meant to make this video a little different than yesterday, but I ran out of time. So, but I'm going to try to be a little bit more exciting today, and we'll see if Monday's video can be even better. So today we are talking really about two different things. The first thing are elements. So what is matter made of? Well, we know that matter is made of elements, and these elements make up everything. Different combinations, different ways they fit together, right? Elements make up everything. Elements are substances that you can't break down any further and still, well, by physical means or chemical means. We can split their atoms, which is what we've been talking about, but you can't pour acid on an element and have it go away forever. That's not how this works. So an element is a substance that cannot be broken down by chemical or physical means. You cannot cut it, you cannot melt it, you cannot burn it and make it go away. I'll say it one more time because it's important. An element is a substance that cannot be broken down. They are the simplest substances on earth. They all have unique physical and chemical properties we use to identify it. You could identify them by counting the protons, but you can't actually count the protons because you can't see the protons. So, and we know we represent them with chemical symbols like H and HE and F and what we were playing around with yesterday. So, according to atom theory, I'm sorry, particle theory, all matter is made up of atoms. Everything that exists made of atoms. The basic particle of which all things are made is an atom. It has a positively charged nucleus, which is where our neutrons and protons are, surrounded by our electrons. Sometimes they're in that version we saw where it looks like a solar system. Sometimes it's a cloud, right? And if you look here in this diagram, we have a couple of examples of atoms that they've stuck together using chemical bonds. But let's take a look. So we have a carbon atom where you really only see the electron shell. That's just something to keep in mind as we go forward. Most atoms are not just by themselves in nature. Most elements are not found not stuck to other things. They chemically bond. They have a chemical bond, which is a forceful attraction between two atoms. They have a chemical bond, which is a forceful attraction between two atoms. Adam. All right, so I just said it twice and paused. You should be writing this. The result of a chemical bond is something called a molecule. A molecule is two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. So molecules are two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. A molecule can be made up of different atoms or the same kind of atoms. If you look over here, we have a molecule of water made of oxygen and hydrogen. And here we have an, a molecule made of just oxygen, two oxygens stuck together. When you have a chemical bond that makes something, you get a compound. This is if, I mean, this is pretty much everything. Everything you've ever seen is a compound, short of, you know, metals. Most Compounds are made of two or more elements, and you can talk about them using their chemical formula. We will talk about this later. Just know that compounds are made of two or more elements, and they're stuck together. If we were to draw them, if we were to draw them out, we would actually have them touching, stuck together, like they were on the other page. So, that is atoms and compounds, both very similar. In addition to that, we have the concept of mixtures. Think about guacamole. Think about, uh, if you like rice and beans, I really like rice and beans. If you like rice and beans, that's a good idea of what a mixture is. Also, iced tea and Kool-Aid and soda and pretty much anything you eat or drink is a good example of a mixture. Um, mixtures are two or more substances put in the same place, but they don't have that chemical bond. They are actually separate. When we draw them, they're not touching. Each substance in the mixture has its own properties, but they can be separated. Each 
substance in the mixture has its own properties, but it can be separated. And it's not necessarily the same, it's not necessarily built of the same stuff all the way through. Well, what do I mean by that? We'll talk about it. So, you can have a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture. These are huge words. Do not worry about knowing how to use them, but I want you to start to hear them because if you look at the prefixes, they come up over and over again in science. Hetero and homo. You've heard these words before. I'm sure some of you are laughing right now. Hetero means different, literally. Hetero, different. Homo means the same. Homo, same. If that kind of clears something up for you, I'm glad. Heterogeneous means different. Heterogeneous mixtures are easy to separate. You can see the different parts. If you look at the cornstarch and flour example over here, not cornstarch and flour, the cornstarch and iron example over here, it is very clear where the iron is and very clear where the cornstarch is. You can use a magnet to separate them, but it's very clear where they are. In general, these heterogeneous mixtures are very easy to take apart because you can see them. You can kind of pick through and pick them out. Homogeneous or homogeneous, some people might say. Homogeneous mixtures are pretty much the same all the way through. An example of this would be like iced tea. Right? It was water. You put a tea bag in it. You didn't actually change it. You just mixed it. You could evaporate the water out and just be left with the tea leaf residue in the bottom. Soda is another example of this. If you boil soda, the water comes out and you're left with a bunch of garbage left in the bottom. So, we can separate mixtures. We can use filtration, so we can filter it. We can distill it, meaning boil in a certain way. We can evaporate it, and we can use magnets. So, that is it. Those are our mixtures, and those are our atoms and compounds. Let's think about them as two opposing ideas, mixtures and atoms and compounds. Hopefully this was slower. If not, I'm going to pause it while I'm talking, and we're good.